r slash ask reddit what marketing tricks do we unknowingly fall for not exactly a trick to buy things but in tv advertising in the us companies are not allowed to show alcohol being consumed but when i tell anyone this they usually don't believe me because the commercials are so well crafted that most people remember alcohol being consumed but if you watch with this in mind you'll notice it's actually just a lot of drinks being poured and or held up for cheers coca-cola name tags whoever came up with that deserves a raise and a promotion people have to make a decision to buy or not buy getting them to decide to buy is often difficult so marketers often present thing in such a way so as to have your brain switch that into a decision between two offers and it's often done in a quite irrational way one common trick is when media can be purchased and shipped such as a cd versus purchased and downloaded some places offer not just the choice between the two delivery methods but some add a third choice for both combined at the same exact price as the shipped option the irrational part of your brain says so i can get this delivered for 15 dollars or delivered and downloaded for the same price done that's a no-brainer i'll take the combo bam you've just changed the decision from buy versus not buy to buy one versus buy the other which is a better deal a lot of people seem to think the point of marketing is to make you want to go out and buy the product right then. Or that you'll stand in the store and think I remember Gillette had a really cool commercial. I should buy it. That's not the point. The point is that you recognize the name. They want you standing there looking at razors and subconsciously filtering out names that are unfamiliar to you. And they want their name to make that cut until it's the least unfamiliar. Next time you see an ad, don't think about it trying to convince you to buy. It just wants you to remember the name for the next time you are buying. Edit. Here's a bonus thing I just remembered. Many companies consider middle upper middle class couples expecting their first child to be the promised land. You have a couple that has enough money to not have to pinch pennies. But are completely overwhelmed with lots of new products they've never had to buy before. Need diapers? Huggies is a brand. Right? I think Gerber makes baby food. So just ducking get it so we can go home and I can grab a beer before getting my hour of sleep. This is why Target famously got in some shit for targeting a teenage girl who was pregnant before her family found out. Story. They spend a shitload of money on statisticians and analysts to plot patterns to identify target markets. Pun intended. Before they make an open move. Retail price 139.99. Our price 49.99. Pay attention to wireless commercials. Over the past few years I have noticed that they are including younger and younger children into their ads. Subtly sending a message to parents that it is normal for an 8 year old child to have a smartphone. Similarly, shampoo commercials will show actors and actresses using way more product than needed in an attempt to encourage consumers to burn through a bottle more quickly. In online marketing. Buzzfeed style headlines work. The one weird trick banners were incredibly successful because they got people curious enough to click. 12 of the most incredible cats you've ever seen. You won't believe it. Is tantalizing enough to get the average person intrigued. And many multi-million dollar businesses have sprung up by relying on this one weird trick of human psychology. But if there is a small and a large size of popcorn. Let's say. And the small is $2 and the large is $8. Most people will buy the small, however, if you add a medium at $7, most people will buy the large because they say oh it's only a dollar more than the medium. Source. That really trippy Nat Geo show about brain stuff. Edit 1. Holy shit this blew up. My top comment should not be about popcorn. The show is called Brain Games as dozens of kind people reminded me. Not sure if it is still on. Edit 2. Also, the prices are just examples. I get that it would be cheaper to buy 3 smalls. That was a mistake on my part but you get the idea. Most menus in nicer restaurants will have a really expensive option. This isn't actually aimed at getting people to buy that product but to make people think that everything else looks cheaper. Specials menus are usually just made from ingredients that the restaurant has too much of and is trying to get rid of. Where the meal is placed on the menu influences purchasing behaviors. Most people will look at the top right hand side first. Edit. According to Free Economics, the reason you are given free bread is that usually the restaurant doesn't make much from puddings so it's better for them financially to be able to give your table to someone else. 
Not happy that my best comment is now actual information instead of something about my highly interesting life. Steam sale. The 75% is just too much of a temptation. It's such a massive price reduction. The Cheerios commercial with the boy and his dad asking him what his favorite kind is. I bought a box, asked to share it with my dad, and he still gave me a beating. 0.99 price tag. Sales at car dealerships. They move their stock to a different location spend thousands on ads telling you about it, and then expect you to believe that everything is on sale. No, everything is for sale. One sale I was getting ready for I got to know all the extra stock that they brought in, and then I saw the super cheap car in the ad they sent out. I never saw this car on the lot, and I asked about it before the doors opened that day and they said that car has already been sold. I questioned a bit further and they said no, you don't get it, even if the first person of the sale walks in. That car was just sold, you get me? Meaning the car was never there and it was a bait and switch. Product placement on television and movies. It's not always subtle but even if you're aware of what's going on, you're thinking about the product and brand. Similarly, bad commercials are sometimes intended to be bad. A false sense of urgency. There are two ways this presents itself. Either the product is presented as to have a very limited stock, thus the customer must choose to have the product now or never, or the product is part of a limited time offer, again pushing the now or never decision. If the customer walks out the door slash changes web pages whatever equivalent, they might notice that they don't actually need the product to continue on with their lives. So the marketing tries to make the consumer feel like they'll miss out on a great opportunity if they don't buy now. Four reasons why making everything a list will encourage you to read anything. I know I can skim quickly and get the gist. It simplifies everything. And everyone likes simple. I don't want to take the time to read all of anything. Blah blah cracked.com blah blah. Extended warranties. They wouldn't sell them if they lost money on them kids. Obviously. I see it as a pretty cut and dry wager, the manufacturer is betting that on average you'll spend more on the warranty than they will pay out, while you'll be betting that you'll spend less on the warranty than it'd pay out. The data is one sided though, since the manufacturer or retailer has all the data they need to back up their wager, while the consumer is basing their decision on anecdotes, limited stats, or in the worst case, the salesperson's word buy get free they know people are drawn to the word free and it makes people buy more than they intended this allows them to move more product than usual even though they are making a smaller margin making something double the price it is and then giving everybody 50 percent off discounts my uncle does this all the time at his furniture store and nobody's ever suspected it buying something you don't really need from bed bath and beyond just because you have a 20 percent off coupon I get those $10 Kohl's gift cards in the mail all the time. Jokes on them because they think I'm going to come in and spend more than that $10. Nope. I'm just here to score some free socks. Commercials in general. Try not watching TV for a few weeks. Get a bloker on your browser. You will see the world very differently and when you occasionally see a commercial you will realize how effective they are at implementing good associations with the brand. Edit. Inverted D. Colors. Red and yellow are two colors that psychologically make you hungry, which is why a lot of eateries will use one or both in their signs. Candy goods and the checkout line. I'm already purchasing something, so why not just purchase one more little thing? It's only a dollar or two. A trick called odd even pricing. Consumers are more likely to buy something at a price ending in an odd number that is right under an even whole number. That is why a lot of things are priced $4.99, 4.97 or 4.95 instead of just saying it costs $5. Staying right under that next whole number somehow makes the product more appealing. Shaking things. I don't know if marketers use this one, but I have found that if I want someone to eat something, but they are unsure of it. Shaking the food will change their mind. I use it to get people to try my homemade baked goods at Christmas parties. However, it is worthless once someone has been told about it. It occurred to me recently that the main way I see McDonald's logos is when I'm walking down the street and see their litter on the ground. 
I had the dog trick while while working at a flea market. If I saw a passerby with the dog, I would say something like, Hey I'll give you a discount if you let me pet your dog. These people love to show off their dogs. So they say sure, not realizing they just agreed to buy something. At the grocery store the higher margin items are placed closer to eye level than the lower margin items which tend to be lower on the shelf. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.